Welcome back to Real America. Millions of Americans have already cast their ballot for the election, but how many of those ballots are questionable? Just a few days ago, the Integrity Project of California sent the California Secretary of State a letter notifying him more than 440,000. Let me repeat that. 440,000 mail-in ballots were very concerning. Some of those ballots in question included people who have died or have moved out of the Golden State. Thousands of California voters have received two or more ballots. That's right. Some received them and were actually registered in multiple states. Many Americans mailed their ballots in early because, of course, they feared that it wouldn't be counted in time for the election because of the pandemic, right? That's what the mainstream media and the left keep telling you. Get it in by mail because you can't go to the polls and vote. Now, the Registrar of Voters, Neil Kelly, said the DAs in the area will help election officials enforce the law and mitigate any issues that arise in those areas in California. Okay, let's hope. California's governor, Gavin Newsom, implementing now more major holiday restrictions. The dictator-like governor releasing requirements for attending holiday gatherings, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. If California's plan on gathering like normal for the holiday, they will only be allowed to congregate now with no more than three households at a time. The host must collect the names and contact information of all gathering. You're supposed to be outdoors and members from different households must sit six feet apart. Masks should be worn. Any singing, chanting, or shouting should be done only outside. And oh yeah, the event must be under two hours. Sounds like a really cool holiday with your family and friends, Mr. Newsom. The holidays are, of course, known for gathering with loved ones. And um, I don't think that folks are really going to take to that. There's so much going on in the Golden State that I wanted to have on one of the Republican senators. Uh, she's a friend of mine. She's a Navy vet, and she's very outspoken. Senator Melissa Melendez joining me now to talk about these new restrictions on employment on the rise, another big lockdown in the county that she represents, and this holiday nonsense. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm great, Dan. Thanks for having me on again. Where do we want to go? Let's start with uh, the lockdown, I guess. So yesterday he locked down uh, a county out in your state, Riverside County, which is the majority of your district that you represent as a senator there. He put it back in that little graphic uh, in the purple. The purple means you can't do much. There's no church. There's no gym. There's no indoor dining. And we know about these holiday restrictions. Your thoughts on this new stuff. And then we'll get into unemployment and the election. Yeah, so he put us back into the purple category yesterday. Um, you know, people need to understand, though, that he is basing this all on testing. Um, one of the requirements is that he says we are not testing as many people as we should be testing. We're about, I think, 100 people per day less than what he thinks we should be at. Now, bear in mind that our hospital bed used for covid is very, very low. I think we have about 42 beds being used for um, like ICU use. There's even less than that. We, we have almost 3,500 beds for hospital use in California for COVID, uh, or well, for hospital use in general, and only a hundred and some, I believe, are actually being used for COVID. So remember when this all started, they said, we don't want our hospitals to be overwhelmed. We want to make sure our hospitals can take care of everyone. Right. Well, our hospitals are underwhelmed with COVID cases in Riverside County, yet he has still decided to shut us down and put us in the most restrictive tier. Again. That's the main reason I remember hearing from him and other governors for the massive immediate shutdowns where we're going to have so many cases, hospitals can't keep up, so we got to go to the lockdown for two weeks. Oh, for a month. Oh, for two months. Oh, now it's seven months. And you have how many? In 41 people? Yeah, 42, I think, in ICU use, yeah. So, but there is hope. Um, I will tell you, Dan, that as we are talking right now in Sutter County Superior Court, a court case is being heard, um, basically us against Newsom. And this deals with his state of emergency. It deals with the executive orders that he's been issuing. I think all 47 of them that have changed about 400 different laws in California. That case is being heard today. Um, and I will tell you there is good news also in that Governor Newsom decided he was going to turn in a letter as evidence that two Democrats signed, um, you know, applauding his efforts. And he wanted to use that as evidence that the legislature was on board with what he's doing. And the judge said, 
I don't think so. And so she tossed that evidence out, that letter out. So that's that's a good start to this hearing. The judge is going to make her ruling probably in a couple of days, so I'm hoping by Friday. But the court case is being heard right now. Well, he's pretty much acting like a dictator because you guys are not in session until the beginning of the year. I know that. And so he's making all these administrative calls as the top executive for your state. But I hope, and it appears like what you just told us, that maybe like the state Supreme Court did in Michigan and other states back east, they're going to find these draconian style governors do, did something illegal against the Constitution and tell them no more. Let's hope and pray for the Golden State. Uh, all right, so we covered the ridiculous lockdowns. Let's talk unemployment because your county and other counties have massive unemployment rates right now, some double what the national average is. I think the national average is in the sixes and Riverside County's 11 something, almost 12, because it's a seasonal type area with a lot of service industry and he keeps shutting them down. And if you've only got 42 folks in those beds and maybe the testing shows some positive numbers are going up, but the deaths aren't going up because let's be real, this is a virus that has a 99% survivability rate. Why does he continue these lockdowns? This unemployment is gonna lead to serious problems down the road, as the CDC has said. Well, and we already had serious problems. Just look at the number of people who are now, you know, sunk into a great deep depression, not just adults, but children as well. And he's ignoring all of these warning signs that we have been seeing that we have been warning about. So he's putting more people out of work. I mean, you know, our positivity rate, I think, is a, a little over 8%. So it's slightly above it. And then he immediately moves us to the purple tier, the most restrictive tier. He's doing more damage than he is doing good because, again, we don't have a lot of people in the hospitals. We just don't. So I think, honestly, Dan, his, he's drunk with power. You know, It's going on eight months now that he's been able to reign supreme over the lives of Californians, and wow. he likes it, and he intends to keep doing it. Melissa, I know you've got another interview in there. Wrap me up, but i got to get this one in real quick about the election because we're 13 days out. Uh, you heard me probably just before you came on, read that story about the 440,000 questionable ballots yeah. in your state. Uh, we've also heard about the ballot boxes that Republicans set up to make sure the votes come in and get counted. And now you got an attorney general uh, reaching out saying that they may not be legal to do that, even though the law says you can. I saw your tweet calling him out, telling him to pound sand. Fill us in on what's going on with the elections yeah. in your state. Uh, we got about 30 seconds. He wants to know where our boxes are, where they're being deployed, all the locations, who's manning them. And my response to that is over my dead body. When you tell us how all of your campaign operatives are deploying and where they're going, then we'll let you in on our little secret. Until then, forget it. It's not going to happen. Well, I'm concerned that 440,000 voices might not have, you know, I mean, you're talking about dead people moved out of state, all these things. And yet the mainstream media and the left keep saying it, they've changed the narrative. It doesn't happen voter fraud, I mean, to mm. it barely happens. It's small numbers. 440,000 is not a small number. Melissa, we could go on and on, but I know you got to run. I got to get to my next guest. Uh, but thank you so much for filling us in on what's Thanks. going on in the Golden State with uh, Mr. Dictator Newsom. We'll have you back on real soon. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Keep up the good work. Yep. Thanks, Senator. Uh, coming up next in tonight's Patriot Report, a woman who turned her home into what's now known as the Trump House. It's been this way for like four years. It is amazing. Wait till we introduce you to her. Her patriotism just, it's unparalleled. Be right back.